In My Hero Academia, One For All is a quirk that has nine different users, and in this video, we're gonna discuss every single one of them. Now, One For All is a quirk that currently belongs to Izuku Midoriya, the ninth user of the quirk. It's a quirk that stores and builds up power as it's passed through the generations, even storing the previous personalities and quirks of the X users. And after a few different incidents in the story that interacted with One For All in strange ways, Izuku, otherwise known as Deku, eventually became able to freely talk to the different hosts of One For All as Vestiges, who could now guide our hero and directly teach him how to use their quirks. I really don't have to explain Deku that far, but his usage of One For All is centered around enhancing his movements with superhuman speed and power, given that he was originally quirkless when he was given the quirk, so with no quirk to boost, he's able to use its power physically, much like All Might was capable of doing. As an example, Deku has a lot of moves that are just copies of All Might's moves, but he's definitely worked a few originals in there as well. Speaking of All Might, he's the other most well-known user of One For All on this list, being the eighth user of the quirk overall. Toshinori Yagi, otherwise known as the greatest hero of all time, All Might, was a man who drastically changed society with his use of this quirk. He's the longest living one for all user holding the quirk for decades, and during this time, his endless campaign to put a stop to all for one and his extensive criminal network led All Might to accumulating so much power that the other people in the My Hero Academia universe talked about it like it was almost comical. He could walk and create tornadoes if he wasn't really careful. He could basically jump from one corner of Japan to another in a way that mimicked flight at a massively high speed, and even when All Might was at the end of his journey with One For All, he still casually changed the weather with one of his punches, and defeated a bioengineered creature specifically made to absorb the shock from his punches, causing All Might to go beyond what he's supposed to be capable of, and actually overwhelming this shock absorption, which just makes absolutely no sense, but it's raw, and we love it. All Might is a juggernaut, with him becoming an absolute monster, with Without the need of other one for all quirks that we'll be discussing in a second. He took the quirk to the furthest it's been with limited knowledge of its internal workings and it's because of him that the quirk is as powerful as it is today. All Might struggled for years after his battle with All for One in his prime but eventually gave the quirk on to Izuku Midoriya being the only holder of one for all to not give the quirk up and then almost immediately die to All for One. All Might's master shared a similar fate to this and her name was Nana Shimura, the seventh user of one for all. All, and the grandmother to Tenko Shimura, otherwise known as the main series antagonist Shigaraki or the new All for One. Nana Shimura was an extremely capable hero according to Gran Torino and All Might, and while we still don't know how powerful she was at the time with the version of One for All that existed before Toshinori went on to supercharge it, according to them she was, again, very capable. Now Nana Shimura is the first member of this list who originally had a quirk of her own. Nana's quirk float lets her pretty much completely stabilize herself in the air so that she she doesn't fall, and I believe that she can also will herself in a given direction to a certain extent, with One For All itself likely making this much more viable. Nana has a hairstyle that we've seen actually quite a bit in the series, enough to make me wonder whether she is the reason that this hairstyle went into fashion in the first place, since heroes are public icons with their own varying levels of popularity. Nana's life became very difficult after getting One For All. We don't know what age she received the quirk at, however at some point in her life we know that she was pregnant with Kotaro Shimura, so if she was a holder of the quirk at that time, it's very likely that she had to go into some sort of hiding because All for One definitely would have striked very much like how the masked man invaded Konoha to steal the Nine Tails on the day of Naruto's birth. This woman preached that those who smile are the strongest, but internally she faced difficult struggles. We see her on a roof of Gran Torino after she had to give her child away due to the threat of All for One and watched as she broke down. Nanashimura ultimately faced All for One on what seems to be some sort of barge or man-made island, and in the events of the special Nanashimura OVA, we see that All For One has completely taken over the area around her with a flesh creating horror quirk that seems like it turns its surroundings into weird Cronenberg monsters under his control. And at the end, as Nanashimura sends Gran Torino and All Might away, she points at her student and lets him know that he's the next one up, that after today, he has to carry on her will. Nanashimura died at the age of 35 and it's very likely that her body was retrieved by All For One and the doctor, who would eventually go on to turn one of her hands into a hand for Shigaraki Tomura, so in a weird way she does get to still be there with her son and grandson. However, we don't know Nanashimura's hero name. The man who gave Nanashimura One For All was a man named N, the sixth user of One For All, but considering he has no last name, I'd like to think that this was just a code name or even the hero name that he goes by. N was a black haired young man who wore a high collar jacket that covered up his face up to his mouth, but we don't know if he's just too cool for school or if there's some sort of injury that he's hiding under there. But I suppose hiding is very innate 
DNA to his personality on account of his quirk, Smokescreen. Smokescreen does exactly what you'd think. It's a simple emitter quirk that releases smoke from the body, and it doesn't seem like the user has control over the smoke in the same way that someone like Shota would have control over his flames. It just seems like the user is able to emit the smoke, however we don't know this in detail or if this is something that Deku could then learn to do later on in the future. N comes from a time where heroes had only recently become a fraction of the fixture in society that they are today. And we learn from him and the next user on this list that they actually successfully kept one for all out of all for one's hands two times, making them some of the only users to tangle with the demon lord and survive aside from All Might. This is likely because of N's proficiency with smokescreen, as we've seen that he seems to be very calculated and cool minded, and when Deku overuses smokescreen, he's very quick to chime in and let Deku know to take it easy, since the opponent could use the smoke against him if he's not careful. N eventually couldn't avoid All for One any longer, and eventually he gets into a battle of All for One where he's defeated and even loses an arm, but manages to escape, and in his dying moments, he rips out a clump of his hair with his remaining arm, and with a smile on his face as tears run down his cheeks, he gives the quirk away to the next user, Nana Shimura. This is where I believe that Nana's mentality is that he who is smiling is the strongest and that a society can't exist without smiles come from, because N in his last moments didn't let his smile get defeated, and I'm sure his final words for Nana probably fit according to that logic. We don't know what age N died at or if he left behind any family, but he did still look young, and we know that many of the One For All users died very young. The man who gave N his quirk was another hero known as Lariat, whose real name was Daigoro Banjo. Banjo is the fifth user of One For All, and he looks a lot like a human version of Hellboy, and that's likely very on purpose, since Horikoshi has commented before about his love of the way that hands are drawn in that series, which very much mimic the way that hands have been drawn in My Hero Academia with squared off fingers. But beyond that, what do we know about the hero himself? We know that Banjo's quirk Black Whip allows him to materialize a dark aura covered rope from his body that he can use with different properties. Sometimes it can stick and cling to a surface or an individual, and other times it doesn't have this property at all. Similarly, it can extend and contract very quickly, making it sort of like Deku's version of Spider-Man's webs, but the difference is that Deku has much more control over how the whip itself behaves or interacts with its surroundings after shooting it out than Peter would. Banjo comes from a very difficult period in the world of My Hero Academia, and the fact that he was a pro hero during these times means that he wanted to go beyond being a vigilante, which was much more common in this era. We see destruction and bullets flying as Banjo runs up a building using Black Whip to guide him up, suggesting that his era was very active, and that's likely why he carried around an ammo belt on his body, because this just screams the kind of character that has a motorcycle and a sawn-off shotgun. Banjo is the first character in One For All whose quirk is released and free for Deku to use, and when that happens in the Class 1A versus Class 1B training matches, Daigoro does a really good job at teaching Deku how to use his quirk, which Deku has taken very far in the current story of My Hero Academia, with Black Whip seeming like it's one of his favorite quirks, honestly. We've seen Deku learn how to keep the quirk activated for days, subconsciously controlling multiple tendrils like extra limbs, and he's even created a new technique by mixing quirks together called Black Chain, a much more powerful version of Black Whip meant for capturing All Might level opponents. Banjo is very loud and proud, and he seems like the most extroverted member of the One for All bunch outside of All Might, which is probably why Deku said he reminded him of his mentor. And as we mentioned previously, Banjo successfully escaped All For One once and kept the quirk away from him, but ultimately he would face All For One and lose, and sometime during the battle as he was crushed under rubble of some kind and trapped, he reached out his hand full of blood from his head that was split open since of course he didn't have any hair to pass over to the next user, N, and in those moments we can see that he has a very resolved face on with his mouth wide open, like he's shouting and giving a very impassioned speech, but eventually he'd die at the hands of All For One. Now, Banjo was given the quirk by a mysterious man who we don't even think was a hero or a vigilante during his lifetime. Perhaps he was when he was given the quirk, but Ikage Shinomori, the fourth user, didn't ultimately stay on that path. I can see the logic of why he was given the quirk, however, due to his own natural-born quirk, Danger Sense. Danger Sense is the ability to sense hostility and incoming danger, and not just danger to the user at 
times. This quirk has a heavy load on the body it seems, and when Deku uses it for the first time, he gets a really bad headache and even gets knocked out from the feedback from its repeated activations. This feedback paired with one for all eventually negatively impacted Hikage Shinomori's body to the point where a massive crack on his body formed, very similar to the cracks who started the form on Shigaraki's body during the war arc on account of his body not being ready, thanks to the heroes interrupting his incubation period after the Nomu enhancement surgery was done on him. Now this wasn't an issue for the other users of One For All because all of them died within a reasonable time frame after receiving their quirk, however Hikage Shinomori wanted nothing to do with All For One and didn't see himself as the one who would defeat the Demon Lord, so he put all of his power into the quirk and just wanted to live as long as he could, stocking up power for the next user. But as the quirk started to kill him, he'd eventually give the quirk on to Daigoro Banjo in a scene where it seems like Hikage is either begging for Banjo to take it, or he's on his knees thanking Banjo for not only taking the responsibility on, but also for saving Hikage's life for the remaining years that he had, since One For All had already shaven off so much of his lifespan. Not much is known about Hikage Shinomori's life outside of this, and All Might even attempted to keep much of this information secret by scribbling it out in the book that he had been collecting this information in. But again, Hikage lived in a very difficult time, so it's not hard to understand why he made the decision that he did, especially given his quirk which truly let him know the amount of danger that he was in at any given time. All For One and Shigaraki already give people a vision of their death just by being around them at times, so I can't imagine what that must have been like for Mr. Shinomori. However, Shinomori had a better life than the user before him, whose name we don't even know. He's a muscular looking man who wears a ragged bandana over his forehead and wears what seems to be some sort of piece together combat suit, featuring a hard vest, a belt, and patches on his side and back pockets. The third user of One For All comes from the period where All For One originally built his empire, and worked alongside the second user to take up arms against All For One's organizations in any way that they could. The third user's quirk is one of the best in One For All in my opinion, especially when paired with other ones like Black Whip or the final one on this list. The third user's quirk, Fajin, more or less allows the user to build up kinetic energy through their movements, and while the energy takes a long time to build up normally, after being boosted by One For All, Deku is capable of building up lots of Fajin energy just by whipping himself around with Black Whip or float during combat. Fajin acts like a booster of sorts, being sort of like a Kaioken boost for One For All, and this I'm sure did make its user very formidable in his time, especially since the user had many allies that could all work together with their quirks to reach a desired effect. He was capable of doing this because of the man before him, the second user of One For All, another character whose name we don't know. Horikoshi only tends to hide names when they'll be important later, so I definitely think that these two may have ties to character that we know in the modern day, but the second user of One For All is the warrior of the group, with him being a leader that led a large force against All For One, trying to keep the overlord from coming into and staying in power. The second user paired of the third successfully pushed All For One back enough that they were able to break into one of his safe houses, which I'm sure was either extremely well guarded or hidden, and they were able to find the first user of One For All inside. At first, the second user thinks to blow away who or whatever is behind that door with some sort of projectile shooter that he has on his arms, but instead he reaches out his hand and decides to help the man, truly starting our story. The second user's quirk gear shift allows the user to manipulate the speed of something that they touch, completely ignoring the laws of inertia. This can be done through multiple stages, mimicking a car's manual gear system, and paired with other quirks like Fajin and One For All, it allows the user to completely warp and even break the laws of physics and conserving motion. Now, both the second and third users refuse to acknowledge Deku at first, but things continue to progress and eventually, they begin to understand Deku's determination, with the second and third finally coming around and accepting Deku as the final user of One For All. He's a tall young man with a scar across his face that he received in his final moments, and he likely has colored hair, since in the manga it's shaded a bit differently than white or blonde hair, leading me to believe that his hair might be red or something, and at the very least, we see that his eyebrows are also drawn dark, making me further believe that his hair has a color that we just haven't seen yet. While we don't know how the third user met his end against All For One, we know that the second user was killed by All For One, with the villain having tears in his eyes as all of his surroundings look destroyed, and the second user just smiles, knowing he doesn't have the quirk anymore and that it's been given on. 
Lastly, the final user in this video, and of course the first user of One For All, Yoichi Shigaraki, otherwise known as All For One's little brother. Yoichi was a malnourished man of green eyes and white hair who was often seen in simple white clothes. We know that originally things between Yoichi and his brother were rather normal as the two grew up reading comic books and playing games together, but eventually All For One saw himself more like the villains in those books and wanted to create a new world like the ones he saw in the comic book. But his brother who read the books even further knew that this was doomed to fail because the righteous and the just will always win. Heroes will always defeat evil or so he thought. Having no way to go against his brother, Yoichi is eventually caged and hidden away until All For One finds a quirk that allows the user to stockpile power and gives the quirk to Yoichi, not knowing that Yoichi could then later on give the quirk away due to him having his own quirk, which fused together into One For All. We don't know for sure how Yoichi died, but I believe that it was at the hands of the second user, which is very likely why All For One was crying when he found the second user and had him by the throat. We've seen that Yoichi is the guiding light for all the other ones for all holders, and it's typical for him to appear in their dreams at least once around the time where they get the quirk, with Nana and Deku both being examples of this. Yoichi wants the battle between himself and his brother to finally end, and has seen his brother's actions over the generations and all the people that he uses. It seems though like Yoichi will finally have that peace soon, as the battle with All for One comes to an end. And that is the entire history of the quirk known as One For All, and those are all the different users of One For All, how they died, and how they passed the quirk on to the next person. If you liked this video or if it kept you busy for a while, please hit that like button and get the video to 500 likes, and I'll do a video discussing what would happen if every One For All user ever fought, assuming that they all had All Might level strength. If you have strong opinions on who you think would win, let me know in the comment section below, and of course, I'd love it if we could start the year off right with you subscribing if you haven't already, and you click in the notification bell to join my league of notifications as we head into this new year full of content. I appreciate you guys very much and I'll see you again soon with a couple all for one theme videos. Hang in there, the new chapter releases Friday the 6th this week and it seems like we've got a great new anime opening by Eve, so look forward to it and this is Pineapple. See you guys later, peace.